All right. Howdy, folks. This is Shane from Black Swan Revelations. We have an exciting show for you tonight. We're going to be talking a little bit about the Titanic tonight. This is basically the 111th year anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. It struck an iceberg on April 14th, uh, 111 years ago. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Was this a possible black swan? Was this uh, was this uh, a mystery? Like, could this have been prevented? We're going to be talking about this a little bit tonight. What were some of the events behind it? You know, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the captain as well. We'll talk about the crew, a little bit about the ships. And then also we're going to be talking a little bit about Israel as well. So we got an exciting crew. Uh, we have... I have three guests for the panel tonight. I have Bob Hagen, and I have also Robert Breaker joining us, and Amy Moosefeld. So I'm going to bring them on, and I'm very excited. So let's let's get going here. All right, all right, all right. Everybody's mic is on. So yeah, hi good everyone, evening, guys. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How you doing, Bob? How's it going tonight? Good to be here. I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, Amy, Amy's in the house. How you doing, Amy? Yes. Hello. I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so thankful that you invited me to this really special, um, really interesting, um, rather very angry. I'm very angry about the research that I have done in regards to this. Um, it's very, very sad. It's such a tragic thing that happened all these years ago. Um, I'm interested to hear your guys' uh, perspective on it and what you know about it. Um, but yeah, I'm very thankful to be here with all of you great, wise uh, brothers in Christ. For sure, for sure. Awesome. Brother Robert, welcome aboard. Hello. Thank you. Good to be here. This is an interesting topic. I can't wait to give a couple little nuggets or whatever, little things that I've learned, but I don't have a lot for you. Yeah, no, <laughs> at least no. I got something, so amen. Yeah, no, for sure. Bob, I just want to say, like, I think you just need to bring your mic just a little bit downward. Yeah, exactly. Just away from your nose. Sorry. Man. Yeah, that's all right. High, qu now. high quality audio yeah. equipment here. Yeah, for sure. It just feels like we're we're in a submarine, which is actually pretty good. I, 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 I actually like that effect. So that's cool. Right. <laughs> submarine effect. Yeah. Oh, geez. So, yeah. So, so basically, like I mentioned, 111 years ago, the Titanic sent sail, uh, smashed into an iceberg, and there's all kinds of conspiracy theories. We know we're, we're not going to dive too deep on all of them, but I think it's important to kind of remind yourself of the situation because, again, the Titanic was dubbed a ship that not even God himself could sink, and obviously we know what happened, so I, I think it's important to talk about it. Um, I'm just going to start off maybe perhaps a little bit about just what what was kind of the, the background a little bit about them taking off from where they were. And then basically they were on the trip going to Canada. Uh, and actually, I think it's New York that they're actually headed headed towards. But obviously they didn't make it that night. They, they hit icebergs. They left and, England or someplace. Yeah. 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 Um, Can so I interject something real quick? Yeah, for sure, for it's sure. Titanic, which is amazing because it makes you think of Titans. And what were Titans? The giants from the fallen angels. Yes. Did, were you going to mention the name of the sister ship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was basically the sister ship. three. Yeah, three well, ships. The one I looked up, I want to hear the other one. But the other sister yeah. ship is Olympus or yes. Olympic. 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 Which makes yeah. you think of Mount Olympus where they say the gods were. So yes. is this an accident or is this paying homage to false gods? No, right. no, yes. there's no accident. Yeah, exactly. So we got three ships. The, the first one is the Olympic. That was one that was already commissioned. And then you have the second ship, which is the Titanic. And then you have the third ship that was originally called the Gi Gigantic, which is kind of interesting. The then giant. Then later, yeah. So wow. Later, later, they changed the ship's name to the Britannic which is interesting. We'll talk a little bit about that. The what? 
protein? To Britannica? Br Britannic. Oh, the Britannic. A Britannic. Okay, Britannic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that ship actually sunk as well. They hit a landmine, which is almost unbelievable that you got two out of three ships that actually sunk. Wow. It's crazy, crazy. But yeah, so the names are, are quite amazing in itself. The idea behind it, these are colossal ships. And mm -hmm. they basically designed them all the same. So they're all approximately 862 uh, feet in length. All three of them, all virtually identical. There's just a few minor manufacturing changes that they have, but not enough that the average person would just look at them and go, oh, yeah, that's that's Olympic. Oh, yeah, that's the Titanic. Like they're they're basically built virtually at the same time. And what's interesting is that the captain of the Titanic, Edward Smith, was actually the captain of the Olympic as well, which is kind of mm -hmm. interesting. And on one of his voyages, um, a ship called this is this is kind of bizarre, uh, the HMS Hawk. So HMS, if you if you think about it, not that this has anything to do with Hamas, but if you mm -hmm. say HMS, it's kind of similar mm. similar i know it's a little bit of a stretch her right? majesty's yeah. serve yeah her majesty's ship that's what HMS her majesty's is. ship that's right yeah yeah. yeah so it's 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 interesting that the the hawk hms hawk actually hit the rear of the olympic and they had to repair it and mm. when they repaired it they had to dock it right beside the titanic and so what some of the theories are is while the the Titanic is being built, they actually used some of the parts from the Titanic. For example, the propeller that was supposed to go on the Titanic actually got used for the Olympics so that they could repair it a lot faster. And mm -hmm. on the propeller, it's basically Mark 401 because it was destined to the Titanic. And there's a huge theory, huge theory. I can't say it's 100% true or 100% false that there is a bit of a, a, a switcheroo going on to make the Olympic look like the Titanic and vice versa. So that because of all the damage done to the Olympic, uh, the owner, one of the owners, uh, JP Morgan, was basically on the, he's basically responsible for the entire repair for the ship because uh, insurance wouldn't cover it. So it was basically, so all of a sudden you start getting a bit of a motive saying, well, what would be a motive to sink the Titanic? Well, if you were to make a switch and get people to believe that the Olympic is actually the Titanic and because you're not getting any insurance money for the Titanic or for the Olympic, if you can pose it as the Titanic, have it go off to sea because he owns the Titanic as well. If the Titanic were to sink because it's already badly damaged, you can now get insur an insurance claim for that and then you're okay. Because otherwise, you're basically, mm -hmm. your whole company, White Line, is, uh, is basically, uh, White Line is basically on the verge of bankruptcy. And that's kind of the rumor yeah. bill that was going on that like you yeah. could actually build a, a case for this kind of thing. And the captain has been known for hitting ships. And so all of a sudden <laughs> Great he's guy. in a position where it's like, I kind of have to toe the line. Otherwise, all of a sudden I could be ratted out and say, okay, well, you killed these people. Are you injured these people here? You're not a good captain. And then if I if we put you on trial with the Titanic, you're going down. So there's lots of rumor vills going on, but I, I want to get your take on this, yeah. Robert. Well, JP, real quick, JP Morgan oh, yeah, is supposed to be on the Titanic. Yeah. And he for some reason didn't get on there. Yeah. About for some five, oh, yeah, five yeah. days, five days before the Titanic was to sail. JP Morgan decided not to go and a bunch of other people within his business decided not sure. to go at the last minute as well. And he actually removed a couple of his golden statues off the Titanic. Makes you think he knew in advance, huh? And yeah. remember the Lusitania, the Lusitania? Mm. Um, that was what one of the things that started World War One. 
and they were handing out flyers saying, you know, this ship may or may not make it to its destination. So people had warnings. So I'm of the opinion that these kind of things are all in advance planned because some rich guy wants to get richer and somebody collected a lot on insurance. But um, yeah. the standard teaching from a lot of people is man said, God cannot sink this ship. And many people say, and look what God did. God sunk the ship. And he sent an iceberg and he sunk. And that, you know, that's possible. But did God have to exert himself? My grandpa, um, and, and by the way, it had four holes. So so the Titanic mm -hmm. had four holes. So if one broke, it would only fill up with water and it just go down a little. If two broke, if three, what are the odds of four hole, four holes breaking? It was literally built to be unsinkable. And yet it sunk. So my grandpa, he used to work at the in uh, Galveston. He used to work at the shipyards. My grandpa hung around ships, and in the military, he drove the little um, oh I forget the name the little boats that they would land, and all the troops would come out. There's a name for it. Oh, like Higgins the transports. Yeah, oh, okay. the Higgins boats. My grandpa okay. used to, and he didn't go to D-Day because a general said, "No, you're not sending him over there. He knows where all the fish are." So that saved my grandpa from dying because oh, wow. the general said, he's my guy that takes me fishing and he knows where all the fish are. But I don't know if it was in the military in World War II or what, but my grandpa met a man who was on the Titanic. And this was his story. And I'm not going to tell you it's true. I'm not going to tell you it's not. I'm just telling you what my firsthand account was from my grandpa, what he told him. And he said that they were bragging the whole time. It was all about we're bragging. This is the biggest ship. This is the the greatest ship. This is the unsinkable ship. So you just, when people brag and they're so full of pride, God in heaven just kind of goes, hey, Michael, hey, Gabriel, look at this. And so they're going across and this guy worked down in the engine room and they were supposed to get there and he wanted to get there. The captain decided he wanted to get there a day or two early so they could mm -hmm. brag and say, we made it across faster than any other ship. So he gave the order you keep pitching in more coal and that led to the coal getting so hot and them getting so hot that one of them blew up and that's what sunk the ship. So like I said, I'm not going to tell you if that's the true story. If that's not, but that's what this guy said who was there that saw it firsthand that told my grandpa and how funny and fitting that would be. God's just kind of hands off. Yeah. He goes, Look at all these people. Man says he's so great. Watch this, Gabriel. Boom, they blow up their own ship because some guy is so full of hubris and pride that he wants to be not only the greatest and best, but the yeah. fastest too. And he ended yeah. up blowing up his own ship. So yeah, that's if interesting. That's a true story, and like I said, I don't know, but that's yeah. just what then isn't that funny how God didn't even have to get his hands wet? He just backed yeah. away. Goes, All right, yeah. man, let me show you how you can't do anything right. Yeah. Go ahead and see what happens. So anyway, yeah, that, that was a story my grandpa told me that he had heard. From yeah, the then, on there in World War II, I think it was. So the, what do you the, think? Yeah, so the interesting thing, so the idea would be that this captain had a little bit of pride issues as well on top of it. Yeah. To be able to perhaps uh, put these people in harm's way as well. Uh, w what's interesting with the captain is, um, I guess, just a few hours before they hit the iceberg, he actually told... Um, some of the people, some of the officers that um, if anything happens, wake me up. And he went, normally he would go to his cabin and then change his clothes, whatever, pajamas, whatever. But instead he went to the map room or the chart room and he's about six foot one, six foot two. And he actually slept on the couch that's like five, five, seven, five, eight with his clothes on ready to go, which is kind of mm -hmm. interesting. And so people are asking the question, well, why would this captain sleep in this room and not sleep in his own quarters unless he was maybe aware of perhaps something was coming down the pipes? And then there was reports leading up to it that there was like six or seven ships that had actually warned the Titanic saying, look, we just entered ice flows. We noticed there's a couple of icebergs around and please advise, please, you know, make your necessary adjustments. And there was one ship that was called the California that basically what they would do, it was a message to the captain. And they basically said, here's our coordinates, which is interesting. And then they stop 
and their captain said the same thing. I'm going to go to go to bed basically. But he slept with his clothes on as well, almost like they're preparing for a rescue operation. And the only clothes that they had, the only cargo that they had was tons of sweaters, sweaters. Hmm. They didn't have a ton of people on there, just the crew members. So it was like, why did they stop? And they were also looking for a signal, a flare signal that was basically blue and red. That's what they were looking for. And the Titanic, that's what their flares look like, red and blue. So whenever they would sound off the flares, that would be a war, uh, that would be a distress call for other ships around to, hey, come and rescue us. We're sinking. So they let off about 18 flares to into the air. And the California were in the was in the wrong place and they said they didn't see blue and red flares what they saw was white flares and i guess at that time there was a ship this is bizarre called the samson that was close by and they mm. were a whaling ship and they were doing stuff illegally and mm. so they sent flares up white flares it didn't go very high they didn't go very high and that would tell their their guys to come into the ship they had no idea about the titanic they didn't see anything about the titanic but the california saw the whaling ship and they're like we're looking for blue flares not these white low low flares so they were waiting and basically there was a huge delay of like 45 minutes before the captain of the titanic decided to send his flares up and there was another ship that was close by that was called the Temple, hmm. which is bizarre because if you think about it, the Olympic, if if the switcheroni was was true, went down, the Titanic stayed, and then the Britannica went down. So basically, almost almost like two pillars gone. So it's kind of interesting that those ships are one is the Temple, the other one is called the Samson, and then you have the California, you have the Corona, which is kind of interesting as well. But six ships warned the Titanic saying, look, you guys are headed into no man's land. And the captain still went through, still went through full speed ahead, which is quite interesting. So there you go, full speed. And if some of the people that got off, they said they heard an explosion. Yes. So was it the really an iceberg or was it in his hubris, he went so fast that it made the boiler overheat and explode. But think of it this way. Always follow the money trail. Mm -hmm. If he blew it up by doing that, insurance would not pay. Yep. Only by an act of God, which would have... So if that's really what happened, again, I don't know. I'm just telling you that's what a witness yep. said. Then yep. he, they should not have gotten the insurance. Well, yep. if you own that boat, you're going to lie through your teeth. No, yep. it was yep. an iceberg. And to this day, people are like... I still don't understand how an iceberg could go through four holes. Yes. So it's exactly. just, why yeah. it, it leaves us scratching our head like, how do two towers yeah. fall that are built to withstand exactly. four yeah. airplane hits? You know, yeah. it's one of those things. I won't go any yeah. further there, it but was, it makes you wonder. Yeah. And what's interesting is they had insurance on the Titanic to cover about $7 million worth of damage. Hmm. And they, um, about a week before, JP Morgan raised the insurance to $10 million. Mm. Like five days before this happened as well. Mm. And people are like, okay, well, that's suspicious. That doesn't mean it's bad, but it's kind of suspicious at the timing that you actually mm -hmm. elevated your insurance so that if something were to happen and they ended up getting $12 million after that ship sank. So, which is, mm. again, if you follow the money trail, you know, we I, I won't go on to the idea that they actually met on Jekyll Island, seven people representing the Rothschilds, right. J.P. Morgan, and then there's one other small family. Rothschilds, mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan. There's one other yeah. one that's huge. Like Rockefeller? Would you Rockefeller. say that? Rockefeller. Yep, Rockefeller. Yeah. So they had seven representatives on an island saying, we're about to start this uh what do you guys have in the States? You you guys have your Federal Reserve. 
the yeah, monster exactly. of the island. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So basically, they wanted to create that, and there are some people that were opposed to that. And so yes. that's where this conspiracy shows and up. Some... It's like, let's go on the Titanic. Let's talk about it. Right. And then J.P. Morgan and his colleagues pulled off they of the ship. Out. They stayed so... on. The people that disagreed. Yep. So some again, of the families were on the Titanic that would have been against that and opposed that. One exactly. was John Jacob Astor, and he was very rich, and he went ahead and went, and he died. He died. And so we might not be in the mess we're in today. If if so, there's so many angles you look yeah. at this, and you just wonder if this yep. did they kill these people on purpose, or is this just some great big accident? It, yeah. It's easy to believe it's an accident. Until yes. you look at all the people that profited from it. And then you yeah. kind of go, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From my uh, research, it was the motive that makes yeah. me feel like it's an inside job. Because yeah. who was on that ship? It's like exactly what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. Who was on that ship? It was millionaires of that time who were opposed to yes. the Federal Reserve. Yeah. And JP Morgan Chase and all those big bankers that you had just talked about. Yeah. They were putting the Federal Reserve on the table. Yes. And right. Americans at that time were opposing it. They were actually not even for it. Right. And yes. like they did not want it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, a, a year later, after the Titanic went down, we hear that's when the Federal Reserve was actually put into place. Yeah. A year later. Interesting. Like, You've done your homework, Amy. That's I did. Yeah. I have quite a few. I, <laughs> I really awesome. looked into this because. Yeah. You know, um, when you reached out to me about it, I'm like, huh, that is a very interesting subject that I haven't really um, delved into mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we should know a lot of these things because oh and why, it helps us to know about these things because to me, it helps me even more take my uh, hands or take take my grips off of this world. You know, it's an mm -hmm. evil world mm -hmm. and I don't I don't belong here. And it makes me even more realize I shouldn't be comfortable you know, in this world. So mm -hmm. what day did the Titanic sink? Uh, April 15th. <sighs> April 15th, 1912. What day are your taxes due? April oh. 15th. It, Come on like, now. Oh my goodness. Oh, Look, I didn't even it think was in that. 1912. So, I mean, people might think we're crazy conspiracy theorists because <laughs> we're saying 1912 was an inside <laughs> job. But yeah. weird that that's the day that you're supposed to pay your taxes, the day they sunk that, which was the imposition the opposition to what it is that started wow. all that. Wow. Yeah. What are the wow. odds that it, the biggest ship ever, like a mm -hmm. humongous ship just sinks? What are the yeah. odds of that? And then yeah. the people that were on it. Yeah. The And then yeah. JP Morgan Crazy. pulling out of it just a few days before he was supposed to go on. Yeah. You know, it just, none of it makes, you I mean, there's all kinds of motives that we see yeah. there. There's an interesting thing that, that happened after the crew was rescued. Basically, most of the crew that, that, that were alive, um, they thought they once they landed that they would go home and they weren't allowed to leave for 24 hours. And mm -hmm. some people think it's because of the Secrecy Act, I believe it's called, where basically um, if you are... Anything related to sea, let's say basically sea ships, you have to keep those whatever conversations that are happening, you have to keep that secret in order to protect your country as well. You can't just blab everything that's going on. So a lot of people believe that because of the secrecy act, if you will, that especially it, it gets enacted during wartime. You can just say all oh, your Navy fleet, you're now under our jurisdiction you're not allowed to talk about whatever information. So if we're transporting troops, we're allowed to use civilian ships, all this kind of stuff. So basically it's it's almost like it comes under another umbrella and you're not allowed to talk about what we're doing. So a lot of people are starting to think, oh, this is what they're doing with the crew is they're reminding them of this secrecy thing. And then they basically, it was almost like a gag order about what actually happened. Like, don't talk about the switching of the ships. Don't talk about any of the the problems that we had on our ship, the, the coals, the burning, whatever. None of that stuff. You're not allowed. As the crew, you cannot say this to the public, basically. Mm -hmm. And then they released them after 24 hours. So I thought that was kind of interesting as well. 
that they mm-hmm. had that. And speaking of which, like with JP Morgan and the, the white line, uh, they basically had a promise to the Royal Navy as well, saying that like, if you need us, if you need any of our ships to transport troops, if anything were to happen, if there were a war, let's just say fictitiously, if there were a war to break out, you can have access to any of our ships, the Olympic, Titanic, Titanic, and the Britannica. You, mm-hmm. you can, and plus we have a bunch of other ships as well. So that's kind of part and parcel of why perhaps the Royal Navy would perhaps turn a blind eye to some of the investigative process on this. Mm-hmm. Some right. thoughts. Go ahead, Bob. Said, I think Bob has something to say too. Okay, just real quick. You keep saying yeah. White Lion. It's White Star that owns White it. Star. White you Star. Sure I think I'm mixing right. it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm mixing it up with that. Uh, the world we left behind, or something. There was a cargo <laughs> ship that smashed on an island. Go, go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, you know, uh, Amy was just talking about um, the bankers. You know, I look at all these guys were all bankers. Okay, mm-hmm. and they were. You know, they they were they had it set in their minds that they were going to have this Federal Reserve system and also start taxing because there was no taxes at that time. And you you also mentioned wars and uh, they've made an awful lot of money on wars. These bankers over the time, you know, we've talked about World War One, uh, World War Two, uh, Korea, Vietnam and uh, what's to come yet. And it's it, the financing of these of these countries. We're not going to get too deep into the weeds in this, but uh, Nazi Germany, the Germans were financed by uh, the family of a fellow by the name of Bush, Prescott Bush, and and his ilk. And uh, you know how how did they go from being a, a country that was in shambles to being a world power with? It was just a few months, actually three or four months away from having an atomic bomb. Anybody ever wonder about that? I mean, they just didn't, the stuff just didn't come, fall from the clouds, their wealth. And uh, also the Ford, Henry Ford was uh, was a uh, a big contributor to the the Nazi war machine. Right. So uh, when, when we think about all this stuff, it kind of ties together. I'm I'm, I kind of agree that it might, you know, I think the boiler theory, you know, the boiler exploding that Robert was saying about trying to speed up and get there early makes a lot of sense. And I've also read about how the materials were faulty. Uh, the mm-hmm. the wells might not have been done correctly. The, there was something that was, it, it was set to not get there. Let's put it that way. It was not going to arrive at its it's a destination it could because have been of the a bomb on purpose. If you were sure. to do a bomb, where would you put right. it on the boiler? Right. That would blow up even so. Yeah. 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 But these bankers yeah. were not- are notorious for, for doing these things. It's, these are very, very, these were very evil men. You know, I mean, you still have their banks going on today, but they did, you know, they loss of life didn't, didn't matter to them. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they were probably thrilled when they heard it went down. Yeah. But, and they I'm own not, the newspaper, so they get to say right. what happened, you know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned, then, uh, um, Shane, you mentioned uh, Jekyll Island. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming, do you all know about Jekyll Island? I think, Robert Breaker, you probably know about that. Yeah, the, the um, guy, um, what's his name? G. Edward Griffin has written a book about the monster of federal uh, Jekyll Island. And, Jekyll Island is the place where they all met and they started the Federal Reserve Bank. What's interesting is the place that you go there where a lot of them lived are built on top of old Indian mounds. Right. And what are under the Indian mounds? This all ties back to the giants. Yep. Because a lot of those mounds were where giants are buried. Yeah. So interesting. if they're into the occult, like I think, they would want to tap that occult power. So they'd want to be over the place where, you know, things like that are. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why they were named after titans and, and giants and things like that. It's There's a lot more that we can never get into, but it's all spiritual and it's all satanic. And when you get that rich and that powerful, you have sold your soul to the devil. And so yep. you are probably meeting in the back rooms and doing sacrifices to Satan and things like that. And that's why for you to kill all these people doesn't bother you because that empowers you, the sacrifice that's made, the human sacrifice. 
But um, I did get to go to, what were we talking about? Henry Ford's house. And you'd mentioned Henry Ford. And I uh, went to Henry Ford's house there in Garden City, Michigan, and walked through his house. This man, he was filthy rich. But what, what I'll never forget, and Bob mentioned it, was looking into all these little, it was a cabinet with glass over it and then book. And there were so many books that were all in German. And I was like, wow. why is Henry Ford? Does he speak German? But you know, he gave a lot of his stuff to the Germans and things like mm. that. And then you know the Prescott Bush, how he used to help the Nazis and funnel money to them and things like that. So, yeah, it is it is a conspiracy. You can't say it. It's not a theory. It's beginning to be proven as fact. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from time to time, uh, Bob, you'll see me, Mike. I'll, I'll turn off your mic, but it's only okay. because sometimes once in a while, Bree. So if you want, if you don't mind, when you're done <laughs> sure. speaking, I'll just turn it off and then back yeah, on. No, 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 no. Okay. Shut me off. I've, I've okay. been turned. I, no, I, that's fine, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. Because you have good things to say as well. So I, I don't yeah. want to be like cutting you off. But Occasionally uh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to read the Secrets Act thing because uh, this act came in in um, 1911, just a few months before the Titanic sunk, which is interesting as well. And it's basically, if I just show this real quick, we also have- uh, Just so you know, if you guys see my curtains moving, it's because my windows are actually open. It's nothing weird going on. Because <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm just all in the background, like my, my curtains oh. were going like this. Hey. Oh, John the Watchdog. Hey, brother. No, y'all. <laughs> Good to have you here. My old preacher. Hey, Good evening, Amy. Good evening, Mr. Bob Oops. and Shane. Wow. Yeah. Hi, John. So I just want to read this real quick, and then we'll jump into Johnny here for one second here. Oh, so I basically, to say, but... <laughs> this uh, Official Secrets Act came in in 1911. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an act of Parliament of the United Kingdom, and the act was introduced in response to public alarm at reports of wide-scale espionage. Some of them, I'm just going to turn off, I think it's Bob's mic. There we go. Um, the act was introduced in response to public alarm at reports of wide-scale espionage. Some of them fomented by popular novels and plays that dramatized the threat supposedly from Germany, allegedly, allegedly from Germany, those Germans, at a time of rapid naval expansion. Its provisions were extensive with heavy penalties for any reporting or sketching of military, naval, or defense installations or the harboring of people suspected of gathering such intelligence. So if you factor this into the idea of anybody saying, hey, I think the Titanic, the Titanic is actually another ship or you think there was something going on with regards to the captain and you're a lowly crew member, you could also face 20 years in prison and you will never work again. And at that time, uh, there was a coal shortage as well. So people wanted to work. They wanted their families to get provided mm -hmm. for. So if you don't work on the Titanic, you don't work anywhere you can have that influence over people under the umbrella of the secrecies act, the secrets act, if you will. And this only came about really three months before the Titanic sank. So imagine the pressure of the public, imagine pressure of the crew that sworn to uphold the secrets act. There's a lot of pressure and there was no TikTok back then. There might've been, like John will love this, but there was no cell phones back then, but maybe before. <laughs> but there was no cell phone covered. There was no uh, TikTok, no Instagram, nothing like that. And so when you had the newspaper say Titanic sank, that's, that's when you got the news. So you can actually dictate what you wanted to share. Wow. Why would they create that secrecy act? Why, why would they do that? Just days before what'd you say days before it sank about three four months before it sank. Months? Yeah. yeah it can't be coincidence there's this no. is all people powerful people behind doing things the titanic sank in 1912 
the Lusitania in 1915. You know, the Great War was 1914 to 1918. So who profits from all this? We've said it, the bankers. So you just see all that in that time, the bankers just getting richer and richer. It's so sad, the international bankers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I don't sure. know if you guys were aware, but um, the the uh, the creator or the uh, the builder of the Titanic, he had to order parts uh, for like the the iron, and for some reason he chose number three. There was a number three, and there was a number four of a type of iron, and number four was the best of the qualities of the iron, the most best of the best number four instead he ordered number three which wasn't as good Interesting. so you know why would he do that for a ship that is known and supposedly an unsinkable it's it's going to be known to be an unsinkable ship mm-hmm. you know it's things like that it's like it gets you scratching your head too mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and there's also interesting, like people have made dives to go and visit the Titanic, and there have been reports of people saying, well, when you take pictures, you take photographs of certain parts of the Titanic, it actually looks like it imploded. There's parts Mm -hmm. where it actually exploded, and they said that shouldn't happen when a ship sinks like that in that way where one part of the hull actually explodes outward. So there's a bunch of stuff going on. And I don't know if this billionaire dude uh, last year that had a ship called the Titan. I don't know. I don't know if they were getting close to something. I don't know. Cause that's, that's a whole nother conspiracy to say, Oh, they, they were poking their heads around. Because if they discovered things that basically made it look like this was the Olympic ship and not the Titanic, you Mm -hmm. have to open that case again. And there's going to be lawsuits to kingdom come all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they basically, like that billionaire, and I, I can't, you guys might know his name, but died at the site of the Titanic, which is horrible. Mm -hmm horrible yeah i don't know his name but for those that don't know what we're talking about there was a a small submersible submarine called the titan it went down to try to film footage it took some other rich people with it too didn't they and on june 18th 2023 it imploded and they looked for for weeks for their bodies and things so what did they find that they weren't supposed to find or was that just another accident it gets to the point when there's so many accidents you go that's statistically impossible for there to be that many accidents. So was it an accident? Did they did they find that maybe someone put a bomb in and blew up the boiler? Or who knows what they found. But I'm going to stay away from there. Yep, exactly. But. Yeah, it's kind of like I don't want to dig up all kinds of conspiracies and stuff. But the idea that you're going down to whether you're paying homage or you're paying tribute or you're you're exploring because you're curious about a ship that went down. They broke a bunch of rules, according to James Cameron, because he actually knows how to design submarines that can go that far down, two miles down. Mm-hmm. And he said they this captain basically cut a bunch of corners in order mm-hmm. to make mm-hmm. this happen. And that's a problem as well. When you start shortcutting things, and perhaps mm-hmm. this is what happened with the Titanic as well. The carbon fiber. What's that that was the, the carbon fiber, the uh, that submarine, that Titan, that was his fourteenth d- dive. Okay. And the the carbon wow. fiber was cracking, and yeah. they did they did hear from when it did happen. They did hear the crackling sound up on the wa- above the water when they were in the ship. They heard the cl- crackling sound, and they call engineers and everything. And this is this is not good. And they oh, wow. never heard about them again. Wow. And they they implode, imploded about because they left from here from St. John's, Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. And when they came back with the sub, I got pictures of that because I went down parts of it, the bubble, all that yeah. stuff. And uh, when it imploded, it was still at eighteen hundred feet to get down there. Interesting. So Two third of it. That's where he imploded. Yeah. 
and they, they were crashed. They never found the bodies or anything like this. What yeah. they found, they, they, they couldn't find anything because then everything fell to the ground in the deep ocean. Yeah. But they were crushed like crackers. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know if anybody can do a bit of a deep dive on this. Maybe Amy or maybe somebody in the comments. The conversion, I heard it was similar to what the price was for the, the people on the ship of the Titanic. I think if you converted it to today's dollar, I think that's what the price tag was to get on the Titan. I could be wrong, but I thought there was something the, in The Titan was $1 million dollar per head. Okay, so that would be totally wrong. That would be totally, I'm totally wrong, because I don't think it was a million dollars per person on the Titanic, even for the rich folk. I don't think the price tag was that high, If you, unless maybe... You had three classes, eh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know what the ticket... Third. Yeah, I don't know what the ticket would be for the first class on the Titanic in 1911. It says, according to sources, first class ticket prices range from 30 pounds to 870 pounds. Okay. Adjusted for inflation, this equates to between 4,638 US dollars dollars to up to 105,000 or no 134,000 dollars in wow. 1911. Yeah. So, so today wow. That's, that's a lot. interesting. Wow. I, I wonder so let's just say for the sake of argument a first class ticket was $100,000 in 1911 what would it be today in 2024? A lot more. <laughs> yeah. Lot more. So if the tickets on the mm -hmm. Titan were a million dollars I heard somewhere that somebody said that they're like almost the same price tag, which is wow. Again, I see. what a waste. Yeah. What a waste of people for the same who die needlessly. Thinking. Two yeah. in the same family, the father and the son, two million dollar. They paid to go down there in the Titan. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe it was that much. The biggest part was the the glass ring, because the mm. glass also imploded. Mm. So the glass ring. And I think the biggest part was about four feet by five feet of carbon fiber wrapping stuff. All mm -hmm. the rest was chips and uh, wow, dollar yeah, size, uh, dollar size particles. Yeah, I'm always curious as to why. I'm not saying don't go, but I'm always curious to why. Like for me, I'm like, I have no interest to go and see the Titanic even if it was 50 feet, but I know, I don't know if anybody's been to Pearl Harbor and I get it. Like it's basically a tribute to see what happened, but I think mm. it would be a bit of an eerie feeling to see these ships that actually, right. Right, so I'm not they, sure. they went down and they brought up a whole bunch out of the Titanic. And there's a thing called the Titanic exhibition and it has gone around to different cities. And when I was in Monterey, Mexico, they had it down there. And I got to go see that, and it was very harrowing. It was very interesting, and you could walk around, and they had so many plates that they brought up, and mm. silverware, and they had them on tables, and they let you walk in the room like you were actually there. And wow. it was definitely high class. It was definitely amazing, but it made it real to actually see a lot of these things up close. Mm -hmm. And I think now they have something in Las Vegas, the artifact mm. exhibit, and then something in Chicago. So I don't know if they still travel like they used to to different cities but if you get a chance to go to that i don't know yeah 20 bucks to get in it was worth it it was really amazing yeah Halifax, nova scotia as a all the time titanic museum there okay yeah. gotcha and I, and I get it like you pay tribute and that i i just think that the feeling would be kind of weird as well okay bob bob here we go bob <laughs> one, one thing and one thing you could shut me off again Shay. just one thing um <laughs> I just was going to comment about the, uh, what is it, what was it called? The, the Titan, the one that went down, John, that the crushed, right? Yeah, last year. Yeah. Yeah. The water, the water, pre the water pressure at 10,000 feet is, I forget how many, how many pounds per square inch. And, you know, there was a, there was a submarine that went down way, way back many, many years ago called the Thresher. I don't know if you guys remember that. Hmm. And they never found it. No. It went down in the in the deep one of the deepest parts of the Atlantic Ocean, and it was you know they they just like like John was saying they get crushed like a like a cracker. I mean it just forty. It's forty atmospheres down there. Forty yeah. atmospheres. 
Mm. So the weight of the atmosphere that we are right now. Oh, I see. Wow. So it's pushing on you like this. Yes. So they never so had a chance. They made a test. They made a, they made a test with a styrofoam uh, coffee cup. Okay. And yep. uh, they brought it down in the sub. It was pressured regularly. Uh, 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 remote sub. And they took it out over there. And it become like you can fit three little cups like this in a thimble. That's how mm -hmm. small the coffee cup comes. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. from, yeah, it's incredible. Wow. 40, 40 times the atmosphere right now that we have. Wow. And I don't think they would have known, right? Like I've heard. Oh, no, stories. it's instant. They yeah. heard a couple crackling. That was a mm -hmm. finish slap. That there they heard it up on the on the ship. The ship is still here. They're yeah. still doing investigation and stuff. Yeah. Yes. There was yes. a yes. sub that that went down. I think it was only a couple of years ago. Uh, was it the, in the Philippines? There was a whole crew, and I I want to say that they're Christians, but I'm not sure because they knew that they weren't able to raise the sub anymore. Mm -hmm. So what they started doing is they started singing songs and stuff. And they actually have a recording of their last video as the show, as the sub is going down. And then all of a sudden it cuts out. But they're all singing songs and they were all joyful. But they knew that they were minutes away. And if you ever mm -hmm. see that video, man, it is heart-wrenching. Because they're so like, mm -hmm. they knew what was going on. But they're all singing to each other and all this stuff and then the ship just kind of down wow, out of sight yeah that's nothing but christians it there's no one else that could do that but christians yeah yeah when yeah, titanic sank there were people playing hymns do you remember that yeah they, they had yeah the, right the they stayed come out. they were playing uh, amazing grace and other hymns as people were getting into the boats man i can't yeah. imagine being on those on those lifeboats when you hear the orchestra or the band playing and they're like, we're going to continue to play. Like, mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that ambience would be like. And the, because song, was, the song was really the drumming near to you. God, the draw me near. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, even mm -hmm. in the movie, that's the right song, but that's what they were playing. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. It's just uh, heart wrenching. And, and what bothers me is, the needlessness of that like yep. just the unnecessary like there are innocent people and the idea that if somebody plans this out i'm like man how heartless how heartless, how heartless. that's the, well that's just the think problem. about you know what we were talking about with with jekyll island not to keep bringing this up but yeah no it's fine like robert breaker was saying is this that it, this is a spiritual evil behind mm -hmm. it because when we read the Gospels, what does Satan do with Jesus when he's tempted those 40 night, 40 days, 40 nights? Mm -hmm. He says, if you just bow down and worship me, I will yep. give you all of this. And yep. so yep. the whole idea with the satanic, when you satanically bow down to Satan and worship him, it, there's some powerful witchcraft that goes on there and the movers and shakers of the evil powers of this world. And it's like, you know, that just goes to show uh, how they could be so heartless. Yeah. Because man's heart is is evil in this world. If they if they don't have the Holy Spirit and if they are given over yeah. to Satan, you know, they don't care that there's yeah. thousands over over fifteen hundred people perished that day. Yeah. And Sad. Really, like what was that? If they knew that that was the case, what was that? Like a satanic uh human Ritual. sacrifice? What yeah. so they can bring on the Federal Reserve that has now lasted for how long now? Hmm. Like it's just it is very it's evil to the core if that is the case. And honestly, from the research that I have done, it hmm. looks more and more like you know that is the case because there's mm -hmm. too many coincidences there. Yeah, there's sure. another part to the history. Maybe I don't know if you guys talked about it, but because of Newfoundland too, Mr. Marconi just finished the first transatlantic. Uh, uh, Morse code with his mm -hmm. buddy there in England. Mm -hmm. uh, that was 18, 1850 or something. Yes. 1850. Yes. And when it came, when it came to uh, the first SOS came, 
uh, mm. from the Titanic here in Newfoundland and SOS. Oh, yeah. That's where they began to, to print it as save our souls. Wow. And that's the first place it came. When you go to Signal Hill here, you can learn about Marconi and, and you can hear uh, Morse code that they have. But uh, there is there is a Morse code there that you can play and you can hear you, you can play with it and you can hear in the my in a speaker and mm -hmm. when you do t t t t t yeah yeah the three small three long three short uh, you can hear and that's what came and then from the Titanic there and you got pictures and everything wow. but uh, yeah Marconi didn't know that it would bring up that but even the speed of the um, the speed of the of the uh, what's the word again of the um, <laughs> frequency the frequency oh. and and the the more so even the, the yeah even even that couldn't save them right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were yeah. going down and yeah, it sure. took uh, two hours and something to go down. Yeah. I think. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. two just over two hours. And what's yeah. interesting is there were pe passengers that were actually tried to send messages just to family, just random, like just this is mm -hmm. just what they would do each day, kind of thing. And, and they would fight. They would fight in the yeah. in the box there because. Yeah, the guy that was on the Morse code didn't want to send an SOS because yeah. he had a pile of yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. To United States because yeah. we are arriving in New York and yes. this and that. Yes, so exactly. I can do that. And then somebody came and said, "No, we're sinking. We're not going to make it to New York." Yes, yeah, and and that's, that's where he sent it. Yeah, and there was actually the California as well, which was also yeah. sending him messages. And he's like, "Shut up! I'm trying to send these messages out, mm -hmm. and you keep cutting me off, saying yeah. icebergs, icebergs, mm -hmm. stop, yeah. turn around." He's like, "Shut up." Yeah, it was the ship from California. And because of that response that they got from those people in the Titanic, um, that ship from California that was closest to the Titanic, the only yeah. ship that was close enough in range that would have saved them yeah. is that ship that was warning them of yes. that iceberg. And when they heard that response, um, they said, OK, so we're done warning you. And they ended up shutting off their uh, uh, what do you call it, John? You just said it. The, the, the Morse code. Yeah, they the shut off the transmitter for the night. Wow. Yeah. It's and really those hard. Morse code were, were working with a 125 feet wire above the ship. If you look at the Titanic, mm -hmm. the cable come go from the front to the top there. That's the that's the Morse code antenna, if you mm -hmm. may say. Because okay. back then they needed you no, know, yeah. they didn't have the power to push it. Yeah. So they were using it, but uh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And the California thought they were on a party because they mm -hmm. saw all those flares, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to just kind of give like final thoughts because I, I said, you know, we go about an hour tonight mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. in the light, but if anybody has any final thoughts, we'll just, uh, let, let's just start with... Uh, We'll go Amy, John, Bob, and Robert to finish this off nicely, and I'll tidy it up with a nice little bow. So uh, <laughs> go ahead, Amy. Well, I kind of mentioned it earlier is what, you know, this, this all, this whole conversation should really do to us, the Christian, and anyone that's watching this that, that doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ yet in, his, in the gospel, you know, it should open our eyes to uh, truly there is evil in this world. And when you connect the dots and you see that none of it is a coincidence, it should really cause us to look up to to heaven that there mm -hmm. is there is good. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That is God. And, uh, you know, what this really should do is is to be a reminder that we're not to be in love with this world. We're not mm -hmm. to be comfortable in this world. Mm -hmm. And as Paul goes on to say in uh, 2 Timothy 3.13, uh, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what we're seeing in our day. The Bible has told us that we will see um, evil is going to wax worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, but us, the Christian, we have a glorious hope 
and that is the Lord Jesus Christ coming to get us soon. Um, Paul, go, he goes on to say, uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not uh, me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. So Christian, if anything, wow. uh, this is my prayer, is that it gets us to just truly look up and, and long for our Lord and Savior to come get us out of this world. Amen. And thank you, Robert nice. Breaker, for praying for the rapture on the Western Wall. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's Because <laughs> awesome. I'm praying for the rapture, too. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. John. Yes, Any sir. Final thoughts? final thoughts? Well, that's very simple. If you think that you're stronger than God, and we saw that, of course, the Titanic was not, <laughs> whatever the reason mm -hmm. is for it to go down, uh, nobody re mm -hmm. really believed it. it was an iceberg in Canada, in the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, whatever mm -hmm. you think that you might be mightier than God, it's going to bring you a lot of humiliation when it comes down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're saved. First Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Please, please, please make sure you are saved. There's oh. no time to put pretty flowers around the gospel. It's turn or burn. That's where we are at. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Robert. Well, this whole thing makes me think of about three different verses. Mm. The first one is Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Yes. Yep. And I'm sure the people that got on the Titanic, they had a false sense of security, thinking this is the best ship ever, strongest. Yeah. But you know, the boast is this ship can't sink. But you don't know what tomorrow may bring. You know, you might go through something like that yourself. So yeah. Um, don't don't brag. And you know, it's a it's a sin to boast. We've yep. got uh, Romans one thirty, in Romans chapter one, it talks about all these sins. And it says in verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud mm. boasters. Yeah, pride and boasting are right together because if you're so prideful, then you're going to boast or brag. And then, I, did you just read Second Thess Timothy 3, 2? I don't know if you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it says it right there. It says boasters, proud. And it says proud right after boasters that time. Yeah. So Romans, it says proud boasters. And then Second Tim Timothy, it says boasters proud. So it's kind of wow. funny. How yeah. that's interchangeable and that's the story of the titanic and that's the takeaway don't yeah. ever get so full of pride that you boast and brag about even god himself can't sink this remember yeah. that yeah and then yeah. who's who's another guy well i think of the beatles when he said we're bigger than jesus or something like that oh wow and i mean wow. don't ever get mm. to the point where you brag on something and not expect god in heaven to hear it yep so i think that teaches us don't be prideful don't go bragging and just be prepared be saved trust the gospel trust the blood of jesus because if you were on that ship and you were saved you didn't lose anything yep. you gained everything yeah i'm sure yep. a lot of saved people died that day because well, they were out seeing hymns on the yep. day so yeah give sure saved. amen awesome thank you for that and somehow we lost bob i don't know where bob went <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah i was just thinking that yeah he just disappeared um I'll email him. Okay. So final thoughts for me is I, I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, my goal is to not necessarily stir it up so that we argue with each other, but the idea is to get people to think a little bit outside of the box and to really reflect during the week as well and dive into the word of God, like continue to press in because when you, when you press into his word, on a daily basis, it allow you to hear from the Holy Spirit. And then if you know who you are in Christ, your identity in Christ, you're not going to be swayed by anybody that has a false doctrine, a false teaching. You're going to be able to pick up on it right away. Amen. 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 So, that's it. so thanks, guys. If, if, uh, if Amy, John, and Robert could stick around in the back, I'll end the live stream. But thanks to everyone that actually was on here tonight commenting and and watching us i really appreciate you taking time out of your day mm -hmm. for this so thanks again guys bye Have guys a good day. see you later bye, -bye. Mm -hmm.